Welcome to our next video on trigonometry. Uh, in this video we're going to talk about the sine rule. Um, and the sine rule is really, really useful because it, you can use it for triangles that aren't right angles. The triangle we can see here, you can use the sine rule for that and it's not right angles. So Pythagoras and sine cos and tan are great for right angle triangles, but for triangles that aren't right angled, you can't use them at all. So you have to use things like the sine rule. Um, so here it is anyway. So uh, if you have your angle A, your side A opposite, so the angle and the side are always opposite, so with the same letter. Uh, angle B, side B, and then angle C, and then this side here, C. So A, so the length of side A divided by sine of the angle A is equal to B over sine B is equal to C over sine C. So it's the length divided by sine of the angle facing it. Okay? And so you, like generally you're only going to use two of them. You don't use three in one equation, but you can use any two uh, depending on which two you have. Okay, so you need to know the proof, the formal proof of this. So I'll start writing that out. Um, how to prove the sine rule. Okay, so I'll just draw a little, another little triangle here. Um, it doesn't really matter what the shape is. So we have, what do I call this one? B and this one A. So that means this side here is B and this side is A. Um, and then what I'm going to do is, I'll go with a different color, purple. I'm going to drop a perpendicular down, okay? So that's going to be perpendicular line. It's going to have height h. Is that okay? So then I'll skip to orange. So if you look at this right angle triangle here, we can see that sine of b, okay? So it's a right angle triangle, so we can use sine, cos, and tan. Sine of b is equal to opposite over hypotenuse, so it's going to be h over a. h over a. And that means if you multiply both sides by a, you can be left with a sine b is equal to h. So we're going to use that. Just box that off. Okay, and then also if you look at this side, so I'll go a different color, I'll go green. Look at this side here. We have sine a is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So for this right angle triangle, sine a is equal to h over b. So here we have sine of a is equal to h over b. And multiply both sides by uh, B again, so it's going to be B sine A is equal to H. Again, I'm just going to box that off and tidy up that H a little bit. There you go. Okay, so we have two things here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down a small bit, go back to purple, and I'm going to say obviously H is equal to H because it's the same side. Let's say saying 1 is equal to 1. Okay, we see H is equal to this and H is equal to this. So that means they have to be equal to each other as well. So that means A sine B is equal to B sine A. So if we divide both sides by sine A sine B, okay, so we're dividing both sides by this here. So this might seem a little bit weird, but the two of these signs multiplied by each other. Okay, so sine A multiplied by sine B. Um, and I'll go... Go red, okay. So divide both sides by sine A, sine B, and this side as well by sine A, sine B. Okay, go back to bright blue. So you're going to see that this sine B and this sine B will cancel. Okay, so this is still an equation. It's A sine B over sine A, sine B is equal to. B sine A divided by sine A sine B. So another time it's confusing when I say it all, but hopefully you see that that's just uh, two fractions equal to each other. This sine B will cancel with this sine B, so the top and the bottom. And this sine A will cancel with this sine A. And we're going to be left with, I'll go to green to finish. It's going to be A divided by sine A is equal to B divided by sine B. Sine A is equal to B divided by sine b. Okay, so there's other ways of doing that. You don't have to divide it by sine a, sine b. That's just what I did in uh, this video. There's other ways kind of be getting around it, but that's your answer. Now. That's, the, that's the proof that a over sine a is equal to b over sine b, and then you can just say similarly a over sine of a is equal to c over sine of c, and then you can say is equal to b over sine of b. Okay, so you can prove it whichever way you want. 
uh, it'll all work out the same in the end. So that's the quick proof, and I'll just go through some of the rules of using it. So go dark blue. So you can use it in this form as it is. So A over sine A is equal to C over sine C is equal to B over sine B. You generally use that if you want to find the side. So A, B, or C. You can also write it like sine A divided by A is equal to sine B divided by B. Again, is equal to sine C divided by C. And you're going to use that if you want to find the angle instead of the side. So you'll see that when we use examples of it. Um, yeah, so you can use it when you have, so we're going to say two sides, one angle, okay? Then you can use it to find the other angle. Yeah, and then also you can use it if you have two angles and one side, you can use it to find the other side. Okay, so there, there when it's uh, quite useful. There's also one other small thing about it. So uh, as we can see from up here, it's always A sine A, C sine C, and B sine B. They're always opposite each other. So I'm going to give a little quick example down here. So here are the example written out quickly there. So we can solve this, but not straight away with the sine rule. Okay, so if I say A divided by sine 40, sorry, that's supposed to be a bracket, is equal to 8 over sine 30. Why is that wrong? And it's wrong because 40, the angle, and the side, they're not opposite each other. So you can only use this 40 if you want to use this side here. But we don't know what this side is, and we're looking for A. So that's why you can't say this. That's incorrect. So just put a big red X through it. You're not allowed to say that, okay? So how do you find the side A? So there's one, one little step you have to do before that. Uh, and I'll leave that for you guys to try yourselves, and you can try to answer in the comments. So try and find the length of the side A. You can't do it just like I have written there, but it, it's it's not that difficult. There's one one small step before it. Um, yeah, but anyway, that's pretty much everything so far in the sign rule. We're going to look at some examples later on it. Um, and we're also going to look at uh, the ambiguous case, so that's going to be in the second video. But next, we're going to look at some just basic examples of how to use uh, the sign rule. So hopefully this video helped and we'll see you next time.